the recording going? Okay, great. Thanks. You bet. All right. Uh, how, I'll, I'll just make the opening comments, uh, Peter and Robbie, and then we'll get going. How's that sound? All right. Well, uh, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Jerry Hanley, and uh, we're here for our session in Adventures in Opening Education, Co-Creating Inclusive OER. And um, just want to pass it off to our fearless leaders in this wonderful collaboration. Uh, start off um, with uh, the representatives of our HBCU Affordable Learning Solutions Network, uh, Dr. Robbie Melton. Hello, everyone. And what a wonderful fall Friday morning on behalf of our HBCU collaborative and our TSU team. You see by the smile, we are so excited about getting together and planning for our up and coming first time ever in-person meeting. On behalf of the HBCU Affordable Learning Solution Network, we are here to work hand in hand with you to empower our faculty members, as well as to support our students in affordable learning solution. With that, on behalf of our partnership with Merlo and Skill Commons, and they'll do a little um, shout out in a few minutes, um, we all have worked to bring in to the open education resource space, OER, the need for diversity, inclusion, and to make sure that the collections are representing all groups. So with that, my name is Robbie Melton. I'm serving at this point as interim acting Vice President Provost of Tennessee State University. However, what you need to know about me, I have been a part of OER before it was OER. It was, here we go, Jerry, <laughs> uh, Merlo since 1998. So I'm an old hand. I am passionate about what we are able to do globally in terms of access to education. So again, I will have my team just as an introduction. If you would quickly share who you are and let's rock and roll. Okay, I'll go next. And I am Dr. Deborah Chisholm and I am the executive director for OER and I have been recently elevated to serve as the interim Assistant Vice President for the Avon Williams Campus in Academic Affairs. And I'm excited. Congratulations again, Dr. Chisholm. Um, I will go next. My name is Dr. Afua Ampadu Moss, and I am the Director of HBCU OER. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Robert Hassel. I'm the Director of Faculty Training for the Smart Technology Center. I can jump in. I'm Dr. Takisha yeah. Warner. I'm an, a, a new assistant professor in healthcare administration here at Tennessee State University uh, and finished my dissertation on HBCUs using OER and faculty perceptions. And I'm really excited to be here. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Dr. Coronetta Bartley. I work with this amazing team and excited about what is going on with OER. I'm co-director for OER and just Good morning, my name is Michaela Wiley and I'm an OER research assistant. Greetings everyone, I am Bryson Scott, a graduate assistant at the HBCU, at the HBCU C2 Coding Create Initiative. 
and the academics esports here at the Tennessee State University. I think that's the TSU team. And now we have our other HBCU hub leaders. I'll go first. I am Jean-Jacques Medestin from Edward Waters University as a Dean of Distance Education and Learning Support Services. Good morning, I'm Dr. Clarissa Westwhite. I am the University Archivist and Assistant Professor at Bethune-Cookman University in Daytona Beach, Florida. Greetings all, um, I am Dr. Monique Earl-Lewis. I am a hub leader at Morehouse College. I am an Associate Professor of Africana Studies, Interim Chair, Africana Studies and History and Director of the Faculty Development, Teaching, and Advising Center. And I am the Program Faculty Director for the HBCU C-Square Hub. And Dr. Arletha Maswain will be joining us. Um, so again, on behalf of the HBCU uh, Consortium, we welcome you and wow, are we really looking forward to seeing you all in person in what, less than 15 days. Great, great. Th thank you, Robbie and TSU and Bethune Cookman and Edward Waters. Um, it's just wonderful uh, for you joining us today and all the leadership you've had for over the years in affordable learning. And, and Kurt, you, you wanna kick off the, uh, MIT OCW group. Happily. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, it's so great to be here with you. Uh, I am the director of MIT OpenCourseWare, and I have the great pleasure of getting to work with, uh, you know, a big team of people who are just deeply committed to the cause of open education and uh, really looking forward to uh, discovering, uh, you know, how we can collaborate together to achieve some of these big, important goals. Um, how about I pass along to uh, Sarah? Good morning. Uh, my name is Sarah Hansen, and I help lead the educator initiative at OCW, along with other strategic initiatives. And I've been in touch with many of you, and it's so lovely to see your faces today. Thank you. How about uh, to Peter? Hello, everyone. Can't wait to meet in person. I'm Peter Kaufman. I work at Open Learning as a, a senior program officer for resource development uh, and strategic initiatives. Have a longstanding relationship with um, our key uh, supporter and underwriter, the Hewlett Foundation, um, and other foundations that are really interested in expanding this work in this space. Um, let's see, to your colleague, Tom and Yvonne. Yeah, thanks, Kurt. Uh, it's great to see everyone. We're so excited to be doing this and, and I can feel the, the uh, tension at Mount as we're only a couple of uh, days out in a sense from uh, meeting everyone in person, it's gonna be great. I'm Tom Smith, I'm the Senior Director of Development and Strategic Initiatives at something called MIT Open Learning. And open learning is, think of it as MIT's thoughts about uh, having an ed school. We don't have our own ed school and open learning allows scientists and engineers to get involved in reimagining education, both on campus and uh, and off and for around the world in, in our open education platforms like OCW. Really glad to be here. Hi folks, this is Yvonne Ng. I'm on Tom's team uh, with Open Learning. I help with fundraising and donor relations. Excited to uh, see you all in a couple of weeks. I'm also supporting uh, folks with uh, logistics. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I should pass it to uh, to my boss, Chris Capazzola. Uh, <clears throat> golly. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Chris Capazzola. I'm, I'm the Senior Associate Dean for Open Learning um, here at MIT. Um, also, my other hat is as a professor of history. Um, so greetings, Professor Earl Lewis. Um, uh, uh, and looking forward to meeting everybody um, uh, in about two weeks and, and to sort of diving in and, and getting our hands dirty in the orientation this, this morning. Um, uh, Cynthia? 
Yeah, great. Um, great to see everyone this morning. I'm uh, Cynthia Brazil. I'm the MIT Dean for Digital Learning, uh, and I'm on the faculty uh, at the MIT Media Lab. Uh, and I'm excited for this collaboration and this uh, event we're gonna all get together soon. Michelle? Yes, I'm Michelle de Graff, and long time friend of the Open Courseware team and professor of linguistics. And I'm also the, the, the co-founder and co-leader of the MIT KT initiative. And so excited to be here. I was at the previous round of meetings with, with this wonderful team. And, it's, uh, and I'm excited about the collaboration. You heard that, Robbie? <laughs> Robbie's here. You heard you heard that Michelle is from Haiti. Yes, I did. <laughs> bonjour, bonjour, bonjour tout le monde. On est. <laughs> Love that. Uh, let's see, Jessica. Hi, everyone. I'm Jessica Sandlin. I'm a lecturer in the Department of Materials Science and Engineering, and I have been collaborating uh, with Open Learning now for, for quite some time, and I'm, I'm very excited to be here, and I'm very excited for uh, this month's meeting. Thanks. Uh, Justin. Hello, everyone. Sorry, I'm in the midst of a confusing commute in the rain, um, but I'm Justin Reich. I'm a faculty member in comparative media studies, um, and uh, I have a longstanding interest in online education and access. Uh, the last book I wrote was Failure to Disrupt, Why Technology Alone Can't Transform Education, which addresses some of the issues of equity and access and online learning that we've been discussing. Um, and everyone should know that Michelle DeGraff has a fabulous op-ed in the New York Times today about Creole language, and you should all go read it after this. It is wonderful. Thank you, Justin, for mentioning that. Uh, Carrie. Hi, I'm Carrie Peterson, and I uh, work at the MIT Libraries, and my department is the subject librarians who go out and work with faculty who we hope are going to join us in the open education resource production line. Yeah. Laura. Hello, I am a, a colleague of Carrie's in the libraries. I'm the department head for scholarly communications and collection strategy. So we kind of uh, look at um, different ways to use kind of the library's collections budget and the efforts to kind of align the things that we are, are supporting um, to, for more equitable and open access. So we're very excited about this project in particular, and I'm thrilled to be uh, here in this conversation. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, my MIT crew, did I miss anybody? Good, okay. Um, back to you, Jerry. Uh, thank you, Kurt. And and I'll just uh, introduce, we'll introduce the Merlot Skills Commons team. So um, Maria. Good morning, everybody. I'm Maria Feith, and I am the director for Merlot and Skills Commons, working with uh, Jerry and Rick and a small team. Most of my work is around building partnerships and connections and developing support systems for projects like this. Happy to be here. OK, and Rick. Hi, everyone. I'm Rick Lemadu, and I'm here to help support um, anything that you guys need around the Skills Commons side of the house. Um, been uh, director for the Skills Commons website with uh, customer relations and helping people get acclimated to the site for folks that are uploading content to them to our repository, as well as for people looking to harvest, you know, go to the library and find things there uh, related to workforce training. So. Um, here to help uh, anyone any way I can uh, relate to those issues. So I'm um, looking forward to this collaboration. Thanks, Jerry and Maria. <clears throat> Thanks. Thanks, Maria and Rick. And uh, my name is Jerry Hanley. Um, I'm a recovering administrator from the California State University System. Uh, I was the assistant vice chancellor for academic technology for about 20 years. And, uh, and now uh, it's wonderful to be able to just do exciting work that I really enjoy. And as the executive director of Merlot and Skills Commons, it's bringing those services to enable people to, and such as yourselves, to help you be successful in what you're doing. And, um, and my, uh, my line, as many people know, is my job is give a gift and not a burden. And I hope today uh, we have the gifts of friendships developing and uh and really to ready us for adventures 
that we have uh, for planning and sharing our ideas and efforts. Um, and so uh, the, the, the next part, you know, part of our session here is uh, we've had a number of meetings uh, with Kurt and Sarah and Peter and, and Tom uh, and, and others at the MIT Open uh, Courseware Group and Open Learning and bringing all the, uh, the HBCUs together. And, um, and I think we'll just start off with recognizing before we ever met, there was, we, we had things moving forward, our goals and the journeys that we were on that really are now coming together. So uh, Kurt, if you just want to remind us all on the, the Open 2030 and other initiatives that you have at MIT, Open sure. Course, that's coming to focus. And, and it could be other people on your team too. I just hit, hit you up there. Yeah, I'll, I'll open it up, but I'll, uh, I'll invite uh, comments from some colleagues as well. Um, yeah, we, we see this collaboration, you know, as, as a really important, um, say, initial, very tangible step around some, some broader goals that uh, many of us uh, have been part of conversations, uh, for instance, in this group that we call the Open 2030 Working Group, um, which we're glad to uh, have, uh, have many of you participate in uh, on October 27th, um, uh, you know, a, a, a space to explore together in a, you know, in a deep way, what it means to move open education beyond just its baseline open access to knowledge towards putting OER in the service of achieving uh, really important educational equity and justice goals. Uh, and, you know, we see this collaboration as uh, just a, an ideal, perfect space to begin uh, uh, exploring this together. Um, Sarah, Peter, any, any, uh, anything you'd like to add there? No, I, I think that was great. Okay. No words from Peter. Okay. Well, well Peter will throw a word in, which is, um, um, you know, the 2030 uh, part of Open 2030 is important to kind of recognize this is a process, you know, um, and we're looking to begin it. Kurt, as you're saying, initial step um it's the most exciting thing uh to imagine getting together in a few weeks online and in person um but also to think about you know a timeline that extends um because this work is um really for the long term and probably not for the faint faint of heart <laughs> uh, well thank you peter and, and i'll say and it is for people with heart Right uh, to really bring to the table, and and with that, I'll and Robbie, do you want to just um, share a bit about what the HBCU ALS the dollar sign is Affordable Learning Solutions Initiatives uh, that has been going on for six seven years with HBCUs? And R Robbie, you might be on mute. Oh, oh, hi. Um, yes. And I will be going in and out, everyone. But again, um, I'm just here to um, share with you. And I'm going to try and readjust my um, camera. So Jerry, if you will go ahead and, and start, and you'll see me moving around a bit. OK, no problem. And, and folks, just to know, Robbie, in her new position, she's actually in an auditorium ready to go on stage for another event. So um, uh, I think um, thank you, Robbie, for just taking the time out. So uh, maybe I'll just get started. And then we have Jean-Jacques and Clarissa um, can jump in here, too. And, and the, uh, one of the things that we've been focused on and, and uh, uh, William and Flora Hewlett Foundation has been supporting us in this effort is building the institutional capacities for HBCUs to accelerate and sustain the creation of OERs, um, and also how do we really work on the five R's and you know reuse, revise, remix, retain, and redistribute open education, really to empower the what we've been referring to in within the, our group here is cultural contextualization 
of open education resources, the content is critical, the practices and pedagogies are critical, as well as the technology services opening and those available. And what you have at MIT OpenCourseWare has provided an open education service platform that has empowered so many people for so long there. And, and I think maybe I'll just make a little comment too about Peter's point about the long-term. Um, when, when Robbie and I started working together in the last century, we had no idea that, you know, 24 years later, that our collaboration and friendships that we've developed over the time would be persisting. And I think the, the need and the role and the enablement of open education resources, practices, and services is, you know, a critical influence of the future of education. And I think what Tom is talking about and how we really can transform it is going to be wonderful. So I think with all the network that we have of, we have six um, HBCUs and, uh, and um, Dr. Earl Lewis had mentioned a hub leader that these are six institutions that have really been taking a vanguard approach for building that institutional uh, capacities there. And, and, uh, and maybe, you know, Monique and Jean-Jacques and Clarissa, um, if you wanna jump in too and just explain um, how we've been working in that collaborative networking way to help advance open education resources at your institution. Um. Well, um, I, I start. Uh, uh, this is uh, this is such a such an amazing opportunity, and and I always go back to to the day I was at a conference, uh, and and Jerry mentioned the uh, possibility of having a uh, creating a portal for my university at the time, of Central State University, for free where we would have access to OER. I jumped <laughs> at that time and I, I, I screamed, I said, Jerry, I'm in. Uh, because uh, my background, as you already know, because I just said it, I'm from Haiti and education in, in, in back in Haiti is, is, is luxury. It, it's not something you you wake up and you like you 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 finish high school and you're like I'm going to college. You pray that you make it to college because there are several barriers such as, okay, we don't have enough institutions, we don't have enough, we don't know people enough, we don't have the funding. I mean, there are so many. I, I can't even I can't even name them all. But uh, so the concept of having textbooks available for free for people i mean to me it was a, a it was a, an extraordinary a, a, a idea that i i couldn't have phantom because you see uh book textbooks back in my country when i was going to high school high school i said not college i used to write a copy chapters by hand to study for example because I couldn't afford to uh, I couldn't afford to buy a textbook so you, you you can imagine my excitement when I heard this was available to us so I quickly jumped on it and at Central State University in the first year I think we we said we had about 69 adoptions the very first year because I took my excitement to the campus and they all embraced it. And now I am at EWU, we're doing the same thing. Everybody's excited to, to allow our students the, 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 the luxury of not having to worry about whether they should pay for books or pay for rent. So this is awesome. And I, I'll stop because I can go on and on and on. Uh, th thank you, Jean-Jacques. Um, Clarissa or Monique? Well, good morning again. Um, as John Jacques said, I think it's always an excellent opportunity to participate in initiatives that allow us to reduce the cost of education um, to students. And 
Jerry is very clear in working with us in terms of offering us gifts, because this has most definitely um, been an excellent opportunity. Um, I was invited in in 2017 um, by um, Robbie, and every aspect of the initiative that they described at the beginning has borne fruit. So I think that's part of the reason why we have such a high level of commitment to working with Robbie and Jerry in promoting not just the use of open educational resources, but this particular collaboration, because it is an exchange around building um, the capacities in our institutions and working to align organizational um, structures and challenges to be able um, to execute this work. So the ways in which we've been engaging it, and I'm speaking, um, um, I sometimes adjunct in the Department of Psychology. Uh, I'm an organizational psychologist, but I'm seated in Africana Studies. And we're able to, first of all, we've always had to incorporate supplemental materials into the curriculum because they are quite often either not fully representative as is the case in psychology and then the textbooks um, in Africana studies aren't always um, up to date around the processes or they leave out foundational theory because of how the books get um, created. So 100% of the faculty in Africana studies um, engage the use of open educational resources as a result of our first grant that came um, in 2017, 2018. Now having the website um, that we're able to curate and contribute to um, is also significant. And it also matters when we are looking at additional funders. Um, just very recently, um, we received a $1.5 million grant from the Mellon Foundation. And I was able to connect with Jerry and his team to say, hey, can we add Merlot? Can we add this cultural um, curation that exists as a part of our Mellon initiative? Well, when Mellon visited and saw the website, that had been created for us um, as a part of our, our faculty institute, they were very pleased that we have partnerships that extend beyond the investments that they're making. Um, and so we've worked with our library, um, very similar, I can't remember um, our colleague's name that is a subject area librarian. We work very closely with our subject area librarians um, within the Atlanta University Center. And so having them as a part of this initiative helps to strengthen the research skills of our students. It allows faculty to engage different types of collaborations and research work um, with our students. Um, our library even sponsors faculty members in the past to be a part of the galleries, librarians, and museums content so that we can incorporate more archival information. So, there are so many aspects to this initiative during the pandemic in terms of the use of open educational resources under the leadership of Dr. Melton, we were able to introduce students to coding and creativity in the cloud. So there are the only limits to what we're able to do is connected to sometimes organizational constraints, but literally just the way in which we conceive it. So until it was formalized as OER, I too, as a faculty member, and even as a student, was looking always to supplement my um, educational experience so that it was more representative. And the ways in which we're able to do that now, I think um, will not only increase the engagement in learning, but it'll also help heal some of the psychosocial cultural woundings that exist in our society. Thank, thank you, Monique. Um, Clarissa, um, and as a librarian, anything you want to add in here? Oh, good morning. Um, I was hesitant to, I was trying to get in there before I had to follow Dr. Earl Lewis, um, but I was not quick enough. And so um, I love how she ended with the her uh, interactions with the library. For Bethune-Cookman University, I am following up on the work of Dr. McSwain, who was here. 
and she helped um, our, o, our OER become implemented across all of our gen ed courses. That was a yeoman's job and every other week I'm reminded of how difficult that had to have been. Um, I picked up and worked with graduate faculty to add OER to their courses. And it has still been a um, learning curve for some. Um, one um, professor that I spoke with just about three weeks ago um, said he didn't think he had done what he needed to do for the grant. But then when he started his uh, planning his course and moving through that, he realized how much he had learned and that he really was implementing OER in his course without necessarily knowing that he was. And I keep trying to um, persuade him to do a, a, um, a video capture for me so that I can send that out to his, to the, to our, to just campus wide because I think many of our faculty underestimate what they do in their courses. And so they don't always know that when they pulled that assignment and tweaked it and added it to their uh, robust um, outline that they were doing OER, that if they added a game um, or some type of icebreaker and it had some components that led to another assignment, then they were doing OER. And so we're still, you know, in the midst of OER here, we're still um, at a different, we're kind of on the other side almost. We have a, a parallel OER initiative that's being headed by um, a colleague in the education department. And we're finding that in those courses, for example, where the syllabus and everything was already laid out as OER, when new people come along and because all of our institutional organizations aren't connected the way they should, that faculty may not be aware that there is a syllabus that they should be using that's OER and they can tweak the OER if they want to update it, but they cannot, should not throw out the OER and bring in a text course book that costs $250. And so we're there um, and trying to put in some type of um, some check some um, some checklists and some oh, some kind of practice that makes sense for our as we move through and shift through the approval of syllabi by by department chairs that have them check and say oh wait 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 you must be new and let's get you to the library for orientation um, and we're hoping that we can get that done um, if not this semester definitely by um, next semester because we're finding when new people come in, there is a gap of when and how they are presented and told about OER. In some departments, it's off the cuff. During the interview process, they get that, un that understanding. And in others, it may be another semester or two or three before they even make their way to the library to go, oh, this is where all the OER stuff is. And so that's uh, where we are, but we have, definitely been able to identify these gaps because of this relationship and learning from other hubs and their faculty members of what the library can do to assist. And we're finding that the library has enough room and often capacity to assist. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Clarissa. And, and I think hopefully some of the things that, that you're hearing as a group here is that we have goals, but the journeys that each community of people is on is really strengthened by the networking and the support of each other in moving um, that open education strategy forward. And, um, and, and one of the things that we're gonna talk about next here is the, um, uh, you know, what in the Hewlett grant, um, we're, you know, recognizing what, what we put in there is to realize the justice and equity goals that are so core to the MIT OCW and the Open 2030 um, is, is gonna, gonna be uh, empowered and supported through this collaboration in the co-creation of things. Um, and really these methodologies that we then can share. And I think what Clarissa is talking about too is 
what are some of the organizational and institutional practices that, that are going to be very important, as well as the content curriculum and the pedagogical strategies that Monique has talked about and Jean-Jacques too as well. So, so this, this meeting is really okay. Um, you know, the journey is, uh, you know, it's not all laid out and it's going to be all of us together um, really going on this, this adventure together. Um, and and the, 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 this next part, just to give you a little background about what we've communicated to the Hewlett Foundation about what does it mean really to um, create what we've been referring to as the cultural contextualization of open education. And, and so some of these issues, when we think about the opening of the content for equity and inclusive strategies that enable um, a more diverse community of people to really benefit and accelerate their learning is looking at the disciplinary concepts that are actually presented to illustrate that are meaningful and relevant and we had for Africana students. And how do we ensure that the researchers, artists, scholars that contribute to the knowledge base are also included in various ways? So, so and again, these are just the beginning of ideas of what are ways that we can ensure that, that we are really opening up um, the uh, uh, open education to a more inclusive approach. So we have the content, we have the practices, that is, what are the assignments that, that we give in? And uh, Dr. Earl Lewis had mentioned how helping that faculty member recognize that all the things that he was doing to change the pedagogy for engaging that students can really become relevant and meaningful for them, all right? And also faculty in, in you know, implementing different pedagogical practices and how can they really enable, engage their, their, their students and also share across their faculty. And then finally, the opening of various services, the libraries and the academic technology support staff that really enable the discovery and inclusion of resources and references to Africana authored materials purposeful. And I think when uh, uh, Dr. Um, uh, West White talked about the checklist of how do you ensure faculty know what's available in a purposeful way becomes very important. So, so these are just the beginning ideas about our collaboration to how can we think about ways to enable this to occur. And this is just the initial list, initial ideas, and, and this community that we're developing through this collaboration is going to really say, what else could this mean? What else is out there? And just hearing the introductions to the the, the MIT community, oh, we are just so excited to listen to your thinking, your thought leadership, um, and what we can do next. Jerry, it looks like Clarissa has something she'd like to add. Yep, jump in. Thanks, I, I'm sorry, I forgot that. Um, so we're also kind of cycling back through our OER because um, we're in Florida and Ur Hurricane Ian help remind us that, you know, OER is not a one-off. Like you do it um, fall of or spring of, and you don't have to kind of revisit it anymore or that you kind of, you know, lean on your past technology skills um, and you, you check that off and go like, okay, I, I think I understand Canvas or I think I understand Canva and I think I, you know, but Hurricane Ian, um, we closed uh September 30th and we officially reopen next Monday mm. and so faculty and students had to not only leave um shut down campus and pivot to online again but for those who did not um who were not aware of all that OER has uh the possibilities you know some of them have reached out to say oh okay um you know, my colleague said she got this from you. <laughs> and so that has um, just been another re reaffirmation that this is ongoing, that this does not stop because, you know, you attended a workshop a couple of years ago and you think you got your OER certificate and participation credit. Um, you know, this is something because especially where we are geographically, um, this is just kind of what we're going to have to make sure we keep up. 
Yeah. Excellent, excellent point, um, uh, Clarissa. And and I think these type of um, kind of opportunities that are often created through tragedy can help us move forward in a number of ways and, and helps bring heart to what we need to do immediately for that change process. Yeah. Um, and uh, okay, and then next here. Um, so and, and, any questions uh, before we jump over comments? I, I know this has been, um, you know, pre presentation of ideas, but, uh, but before we move on to, you know, what are the ways that we can really create more inclusive OER? Um, any comments or questions? Uh, we have Kurt and Monique. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, one of the things that I was going to say um, after um, Dr. West White that she reminded me of is that the engagement of this work, um, because of the unique missions of our institutions, is service. So we are cultivating, of, cult, of course, culturally relevant content. But when we're in spaces where there is a need to act, we do that as well. We were in a session with Dr. Melton um, and Jerry, I think you were there as well when um, sitting with OLC. And this is as Ukraine is being attacked. And so the call was to help cultivate the history in while things were happening. And so we stopped what we were doing and began to gather content because one of our colleagues who was seated in Germany was saying, we need help. And so all you are as a practice for inclusion is the most primary goal, but it also cultivates a skill set where we can engage at any moment in time to be of assistance to people in need whose cultures, whose histories, are being not just compromised, but erased. And we understand that. So when, uh, and we were, and, and, and when you said that Clarissa, it just brought me back to that in terms of, we were sitting literally in an OER session. I was there. Yes, John Jock, I remember. That's why I said that it's, it's, it's work, but it's also service. And, and that is a part of the cultural embedding at our institutions. Yes, thank you. And, and uh, other comments? Yeah, I just wanted to, to reflect for a moment on what you've laid out here uh, and some of the conversation we've had about the, uh, the cultural contextualization from, a, from an MIT perspective. I don't want to speak formally for the entire institute, but you know, my sense is, is that you know, OCW has this 20-year history of sharing materials straight from the MIT classroom, like MIT faculty know how to teach MIT students, I know, and that that happens in a particular context. It's a wonderfully, I know, diverse uh, student body. Um, but um, we are really, really interested to understand what this what this contextualization can look like, you know, in, in as tangible a way as we possibly can and to learn from that. I know, I know there are many among our, you know, teaching community at MIT who are deeply interested in, um, in these practices, the means to achieve them and what they look like in the end and the opportunity to, to partner with experts in doing so and bring some of those lessons uh, you know, you know, more deeply into our community is, uh, is just of the, the greatest interest to us. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you, Kurt. And, you know, and I think coming back to a point that, that Peter made early on about, 2030, when we think about <laughs> the, the process of change that needs to occur, the 20 year commitment of MIT OCW for um, developing and delivering services to the world is, is just something that we are just so um, really excited, enthusiastic, and really feel so fortunate to bring that level of expertise and enthusiasm uh, that allows sustaining of these content practices and services. All right, A any other comments before we go th the next topic here? Oh, 
All right, we'll just go to, and, and you know, the, the journey that we have, and some of you might say, you know, well, Jerry, there's still a lot of stuff that's missing. And, and yes, exactly right, because we don't have the answers. And really through our journey of collaborating together, this is how really some ideas and responses to the needs for equity and justice is going to emerge through this process. And uh, having faculty partnerships between MIT and HBCU faculty, um, really, and, and just hearing everyone's introductions, the commitment to collaborative adventures to co-create inclusive OER, having those discussions and enabling that dialogue that, that, that can enable that, that to occur and really exploring new educational landscapes, the, the innovations that MIT OCW is bringing to the table, what we do in various ways, um, the, the different organizations and communities that emerge and uh, that we need to serve. Those are gonna be very important in the, that faculty partnership process. And, and, the, and the outcome, one of the things that we're looking for are the innovative that you collaboratively can create, the innovative and inclusive OER and practices for sharing. And we do that through our uh, OCW and Merlot Skills Commons uh, to enable those gifts that you will be creating that will remove some of the burden that is on, uh, on people's shoulders for providing that inclusive education. So in building out this open cultural collection is going to be um, our job at uh, MIT OCW, Merlot Skills Commons, and the HBCU um, ALS leadership group there. So um, comments, questions? Uh, one comment I would make about what you just said, uh, uh, removing the burden uh, of the, uh, the shoulders of, of some of us who, who wouldn't know what to do in this, uh, in this uh, arena. And, and I want to uh, personally thank uh, you, Jerry, and, 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 and Robbie, and the entire team at, at, at TSU. Uh, when I said, please do not leave me behind, Jerry and Robbie, they are determined not to do so. <laughs> In fact, uh, um, I know uh, Robbie is looking forward to, to go to Haiti with me to implement OER in, in a more a practical way. So uh, thank you. I, I just wanted to say thank you. Okay, thank you, Jean-Jacques. And, um, and, and thank you too, uh, Kerry. Thanks for hanging there and um, I really do appreciate and, and libraries, yes, are gonna be a very important part of this whole process. Um, and we're coming to, to the end. This is just kind of the general timeline. And uh, as everyone has said, we're so excited to join you and meet you in Boston in this coming October and really to begin to explore what these ideas can mean in operational ways of collaborating both faculty to faculty collaborations as well as organizational collaborations. And once we begin to explore, then we're going to really support your experimentation and, and ideas uh, for a number of months um, with webinars, one on one meetings, things along those lines, and to support your prototyping of um, ways of creating these inclusive um, OER and sharing those and, um, and really having us learn from one another through this process and then publishing out um, that, that your efforts um, and your insights of what constitutes and what are the methodologies for creating and the practices for creating inclusive OER get shared uh, via MIT OCW and Merlot. And what's important in this process, and I think is too, is the outcome. One of the things that we have here is the next grant proposal, because this is kind of a, if you want to think of this as a, a planning prototyping investment that um, the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation has made. And we see this as 
the 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 a uh, the first step in a much larger scale, longer term grant proposal that we would do in a very collaborative way. Um, uh, you know, and again, this is we're coming in the spring semester to be able to pull this off here. So, um, and then uh, Tom or Peter or Kurt or Sarah or the MIT team, um, feel free to comment. And if anyone has questions about the timeline too, I yeah, I mean, I can just say one thing. Um, I think that um, missing on this call maybe a little bit um, it is Hewlett. Um, they will be joining us October 26th and 27th. They've been, you know, you guys have been at it for 24 years. Hewlett's been supporting MIT OpenCourseWare for 20. I think the long haul investment um, that Hewlett and other foundations are prepared to make in all of this great work is huge. There'll be other foundations joining us too on the 26th and 27th. And just the last point, there'll be other stakeholders in open textbook publishing, um, in the process of putting syllabi online for free open syllabus and others. So I think, I think it's gonna be um, um, really super hyper productive couple of days. Yeah, thank you, Peter. And I, I'll, I'll say that this is one of the such the exciting things about the Open 2030 meeting is, you know, the expertise and the enablement of by organizations that you have brought together in that 2030 group is is just phenomenal. And and I think no one can make the change that we all wish for, but together. I think that's where we can really work with one another and share and collaborate in ways that we are so much stronger together than we are as individual organizations. So we're really excited about that. Yeah. Um, and hopefully folks, um, I know um, this project has to fit in with the 77 other things that you have going on and, and realizing that just so you know, the. Merlot and Skills Commons team here. Um, we are here to help facilitate and ease some of that burden for all of you so you can be successful in this project as well as your other things. All right. Um, any other comments about estimated timeline? Uh, is, this, is this one of your last slides, uh, Jerry? Yep, yep. It's the, the last slide is summary. <laughs> so okay. Tom, jump in. Yeah, just, just very quickly, sorry. Um, we keep talking about Open 2030, and I realize that maybe a lot of people on this call don't know what that is. Um, Peter and Kurt and Angela DeBarger from ULIT started the uh, thought process about the future of open education and have brought together not MIT people, but people from all over the OER community to meet uh, what used to be in person and then turn to virtual several times a year. That meeting is happening on the 27th, and you're all invited to it. But it's not an MIT thing. It's an OER wide thing that has been developed. So I, I want to make that clear. And then the last thing is um, you, you had the timeline up there, Jerry. The first thing on the timeline is this meeting. And I'm so excited for it. And I want everyone to know it's going to be a casual, collegial, open atmosphere. So share, talk openly, uh, relax, and enjoy your time while you're here. And, uh, we we all do look forward to it. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, thank you so much, Tom. And um, we, we're very excited about uh, about that. And um, you know, and I think collaboration is going to be such an important aspect. And and the friendships that we're going to develop by meeting together will be wonderful. Um, so, in summary, um, we don't have a roadmap to assure your success, right? Mm -hmm. Just so you know, we have. Just know we have um, experience, expertise, and a passion for what we're doing, but we th the answers are not in the back of the book anywhere. It's going to be in this way, this journey of discovering. And just know we we will commit to support your discovering what needs to be done to be successful. And um, and I think dialogue 
you know, and, you know, Tom, your point around a, 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 a more informal engagement of a community of people will enable that dialogue, that ability to listen and share um, and looking at what are the methods for creating OER that's inclusive and enable the richness of our complex um, elements of who we are as a humanity to really inspire and enable successful higher education. So we're really excited about it. Um, and, and we hope this session here has been helpful for you thinking about the roles and, um, and contributions and opportunities that, that you can have personally in participating in this. So when we meet in October, um, that, uh, that it, we can reinforce some of the things that will help you in your personal agenda that you have for yourself as, as a human being and as a professional that aligns with the organizational agendas and the more broader you know, goals that we have for equity and justice uh, for the larger world community. And um, just wanna thank, you know, we have all the emails of the team who've been wor working together. I think it's been about nine months we've been you know, talking and planning and collaborating and looking at opportunities. And, uh, and folks, we're all here to help support uh, your success in this. And then um, just, to, um, Kurt, any final comments or anyone from the HBCU side, um, feel free to close out the, 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 the session here. Mm. Well, uh, if, if I could just briefly, um, on behalf of, of everyone in, in open learning, just, um, you know, just maybe sort of reflect on some things that have already happened in the last hour. Um, you know, I really think that we identified um, some amazing sort of stakeholders who need to be in the room for, for any future projects. And I think, you know, we have open learning, uh, we have faculty participating, we have uh, library staff and, and, and thought leaders in all these different areas. Um, so, you know, we're all coming, coming to the table ready, ready to do some work. Um, I also really appreciated hearing words like intentionality uh, and purposefully in, uh, purposeful inclusion. Um, and I think that that spirit of sort of like, you know, kind of um, uh, recognizing that so much work in OER has already been done, um, but sort of taking some time thinking about uh, purpose and intentionality is really crucial. Uh, I was also struck by uh, Jerry's point that um, there's no roadmap to success. Um, that said, I think you know one goal that we'll have for for our meeting at the end of the month is to sort of identify what what success would mean uh, for this project. Um, and there's no one answer to that question. There are many. Um, so that's a question I'll be thinking about um, a, a fair bit in, in the next two weeks, and and I look forward to um, hashing it out with everybody then. And I'd like to say uh, uh, thank you to Open Learning. I saved this for last. Uh, I so appreciate the work what you're doing. And uh, personal testimony, we are, as the uh, Dean of Distance Education, uh, we just had a, a, a new MBA program fully online. And we hired a faculty to teach two courses. And it took forever for him to have his paperwork done. And then it was like, two weeks before the semester started, there was no course content. And guess where we found help? MIT Open Learning. We got two courses, boom, your wishes. Thank you so much. I wanted to, to let you know that. <laughs> uh, well, thank you, Judge Rock. And, and Chris, I, I think, um, thank you so much for um, your, your closing words for this meeting. I, I think they're, I think they're meaningful and will, I think, prepare us for a, just an exciting um, meeting in just a few weeks. So uh, with that, and I'm just looking at the time and uh, we're one minute over, sorry for uh, uh, that little extra time, but th thank you so much. And uh, any questions, feel free to contact us. Enjoy the your weekend.